Bees are very gentle little critters. Even though they can sting, they usually only do so if you attack them first, if you accidentally smash one, or if they think you're trying to attack their hive. That said, when bees do sting, it hurts a lot. Notice that even after the stinger is detached, zombie-like muscles keep digging and injecting that venom. The power of this tiny weapon comes not just from its potent venom, venom which can destroy human cells, but stinger's surprisingly complex structure. Let's start out our tour by zooming in on the point of the spear. The end of a honeybee stinger is made of three parts. There is a stabilizing rod, technically called a stylet, and two digging blades called lancets. Each lancet is equipped with backward-facing barbs. Let's animate this image for you here. Those lancets slide on the stylet. Their movements are powered by the muscles left behind when a bee releases her stinger. The blades move back and forth in a saw-like motion. When a stinger enters your skin, each time a blade tugs up, those backward-facing barbs catch in your skin, pulling the rest of the stinger down into your flesh. Alternating movements of each lancet allow the stinger to essentially walk further and further into your skin with each step of the lancet. Zooming out here, we see that the stylet, the stabilizing rod, it broadens to form a large, rigid venom bulb. If we peer through its surface, we see that attached to the shaft of each digging blade, each lancet, is a pump valve which fits inside that venom bulb. Surrounding the bulb, there are muscles attached to plates of exoskeleton that power each lancet shaft. Every muscle pull simultaneously moves the lancet's digging blade and its pump valve. It automatically injects more venom every time it digs. It's a two-for-one deal. In this footage, we're looking at the stinger from a side view, and even though it's hard to see clearly through the bulb, the bulb is the dark section down near the skin, the pump valves are visible. You see that? Sitting on top of it all is a large venom sac and several glands that originally produced the venom in that sac. Now, at this point you might be wondering, if the shaft of the stinger is made of three parts, a stylet and two moving lancets, what stops the venom from leaking out at the seams? Shouldn't it spill out everywhere? How does venom only exit at the end of the stinger? Well, this is a cross-section of the stinger, as seen through an electron microscope. On the top here are the lancet shafts, on the bottom is the stylet, or what I've been calling the stabilizing rod. Now check this out. Each lancet moves along a runner, also called a rachis or rachis, coming out of the stylet. It's a classic tongue and groove system. That joint is tightly sealed shut. Here's what those runners look like if the lancets are removed. Furthermore, each lancet shaft has a curled flexible latch connecting it to its companion. The latch on the right was damaged when this cross-section was made. I'll fix that here with some Photoshop magic. Altogether, these structures form a watertight hypodermic needle, allowing venom to flow through the inner canal without leaking at any of the joints. Here we are looking at a honeybee stinger from a slight side angle, again under an electron microscope. I'll color this black and white image to match our diagram. Here in green, we see the venom bulb. It's partly hidden by the structures surrounding it, so there's a dotted line there to show you what parts are hidden. Up at the top, we have the venom sac. Underneath that are the lancet shafts in blue. If we zoom out, we can contrast the diagram I've made to the real thing. The stinger of a honeybee, it's one of the most amazing weapons in nature. I would rank it above snake fangs, which are also amazing. And I'd put it at least on par with the chameleon's tongue. Sadly though, the honeybee stinger is far from perfect. The wound left behind in a bee's body after she stings will usually kill her. Her life is the price she pays to defend her hive. Only the female bees have stingers, male bees cannot sting. We'll learn exactly why that is.